Oh my God, folks, you're gonna wanna watch this video. These are gonna be fantastic, stick around. Folks, let's get right to it. I've got my ingredients here ready to go. I've got the saffron risotto. If you want to learn how to make this, I've got a video. I'm going to post the link in the description below. I also have taleggio. We're going to be stuffing this inside of the arancini. This is an Italian cheese. I'll be honest with you. It smells like dirty, stinky socks, but please don't be afraid. It is absolutely freaking delicious. Give it a try. You can find it in some of your better Italian delis. And of course, I've got a standard breading station ready to go with flour, egg, and bread crumb. Let's get to this. I've got the uh, risotto right here, and I'm just gonna take small amounts of this. I just transferred the saffron risotto to a bowl because what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna get in an egg. Now, I don't know if that's classical or not. I'll be honest with you. What have you known me to follow the rules? I'm gonna mix that in. Now that I have that egg mixed in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start taking this mixture, kind of laying it flat. If you find, like I just did, that your mixture's a little bit too soft and it's not gonna hold a ball form, well, a little bit of flour added inside will help bind it together a little bit better. Now I've got the risotto ready to go. I'm gonna pick up some of the mixture here, have a little flat, dimple that I'm gonna take some of the taleggio into there and then just kind of wrap it around like that, all right? And onto my tray. Now you can make these any size that you like. You can see I've got a couple of different sizes here, a big one and small one. Classically, I believe they're supposed to be fairly big, but I'm gonna make them as hors d'oeuvres, something you might serve at a cocktail reception. So I'm actually gonna even go smaller than that. All right, I actually allowed these to freeze up overnight. I'm gonna run them through the breading station. So very simply, I'm just gonna take a few of them, drop them into the flour, and then into the egg wash to then just transfer to the breadcrumbs that I have ready to go. And then just very simply, make sure they get covered up. All right, we're ready to fry right now. I'm just gonna check the temperature of my oil. It's just vegetable oil that I've got going. I'm looking for around 350-ish, and that's good. I'm actually around 360 right now. So we're ready to go. I really gotta stress to everybody, we are dealing with a small amount of oil to fry what are essentially ice cubes. Be mindful, that temperature is gonna drop drastically. As soon as I start getting them in, I'm gonna actually turn my temperature up to high heat to keep that temperature as high as possible, or at least bring it back up to where we want it to be. So I'm gonna start getting these in now. Beautiful. And I'm gonna crank my heat now all the way on high. All right, we're just gonna flip them over now. It's been probably two minutes since I put them in. Because they're frozen inside, I'm gonna actually turn my oven on to about 350, 375. I've got a nice dark, dark golden brown color. I'm gonna pull these out. I've got a nice slotted spoon and some paper towel ready to go. Now, something that's really important, when something comes out of the fryer, really important that you salt it within the first 15, 20, 30 seconds of it coming out. A lot of people think, well, it's the oil still hot, it allows the salt to dissolve. That's actually not true. What's happening is when we pull this out of the oil, there is steam still escaping. Salt only dissolves in the presence of moisture. After about 30 seconds, no more steam is escaping. Just look at the next time you go to McDonald's. They have been trained to salt as soon as it comes out of the fryer to make sure that those fries have the salt dissolved right through it and it doesn't just bounce right off and fall away. All right, so make sure you salt immediately. I've just got some tomato sauce heating up. I'm gonna plate this dish up for you and make it look absolutely beautiful. All right, so I just pulled the last one out of the fryer. I'm just gonna make sure I get them all seasoned up and then I'm gonna get it into the oven. All right, ladies and gentlemen, these look amazing. Let's do the old test where we cut one open and let's see the, the cheese pull. Oh my God, look at that in there, all gooey. And you can see why they're called arancini, obviously. They look like little oranges. Little tomato sauce here that I'm gonna get onto my plate. 
All right, just a nice little bed of it down here. Now I'm gonna garnish this off with a little bit of roasted garlic puree. And now just some, some shoots as a garnish. And here we have it, folks. Saffron arancini with a little tomato sauce and roasted garlic puree. This would be great for a cocktail reception, a snack at home. It doesn't have to be presented like this. You can do whatever you want with it. Have the dip in a bowl on the side and all the arancini, but that's the finished dish. Oh my God, I can't wait. Mmm. Mmm. That is incredible.